Welcome to my build of a 60 inch wingspan das ugly stick which is going to be powered by my Thunder Tiger Pro. Um, today I'm looking at uh, building the tail fin and the um, uh, tail plane. Um, first off looking at the tail fin, um, it's just quarter inch uh, balsa or 6.4mm um, and to start with I just glued a couple of pieces of, of balsa together to give me a piece big enough to cut out the, uh, the actual fin on itself. I stuck this on with some um, scotch magic tape and uh, stuck the, the, the template on, on this side where I don't need to cut and a couple of pieces here and what I will do, rather than actually gluing this onto the balsa I'll go round with my scalpel and just carefully cut this out. Um, I've just done that with the, uh, the rudder itself again glued here, and uh, sorry stuck here and here and I had a couple of pieces of tape, no I just had a single piece of tape there and so I just carefully cut round, leave the tape in place, carefully cut round and that works fine. I find that as I'm cutting if I just keep my finger um, by the blade it just, sorry, just um, keeps the paper from uh, lifting up a little bit. Obviously I don't want to have my finger in front of the blade just in case I slip. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, with this scalpel blade, this is a, a, a number four handle with a, a 26 blade, so it's a little bit bigger. If I slip and hit my finger, that's uh, that's going to stop works for a little while, shall we say? So I've I've done the uh, the rudder, which has come out nice. That would just need sanding now. Obviously, it's got the odd blip on the uh, on the edge here. So let's put that on one side. Um, I'm now going to cut around this the, the, the same way. Um, so, very simple to do the, uh, the, the fin and the rudder. Um, the tail plane itself, again, is a very simple design. It's um, mostly um, 316 or 5mm balsa um, for the uh, training edge. No, sorry, leading edge and training edge, um, and also these side pieces, and then we've just cut some uh, 1 8 3 16 or 3 mil, 5 mil um, for these, uh, these ribs um, that, uh, that go across. So once we've got that glued in place, it's, the whole thing is then sheeted with um, 1 16 um, balsa. So it's flat, it's simple. Uh, nothing fancy to it. I'm almost ready to start gluing this tail plane together now. I, I just have a few more pieces to uh, to cut to size. What I've done is um, I've got a flat board underneath here, I've got my foam board which I'm pinning to and I always check my foam board um, with a ruler, uh, this, this flat ruler, and I find that I, I often get just a little dip in the middle. Um, I, I think the board or the table or, or something isn't quite flat. So I put a couple of sheets of paper under this foam board just to lift it up and I just check that. Um, a good way is just to get a, a very fine piece of paper. Uh, I mean you can feel it to be honest just moving the, the roll from side to side whether it's catching. But you can just put a piece of paper and just see if it's if it's catching or if there's free space. So anyway, so this is perfectly flat or as flat as I can get it. The um, leading edge and the trailing edge, I've left those long so that I can pin them down um, with some fairly severe T-pins uh, um, to, to make sure that's not going anywhere. And I thought if I leave them long, it's easy to cut off uh, with my razor saw afterwards to size and I don't need to worry about damaging the, the ends with, with these big holes. So, um, Also when I'm putting these ribs in, I've still got these to cut to size, when I'm putting these ribs in I think as I put them in there's a, probably going to be a tendency for me to want to have a nice tight fit and to gradually push these leading and trailing edges out. So I've put in a, a piece of scrap balsa um, either side pin those again with some nice big T-pins 
And so these, these aren't going to drift out and end up um, slightly fatter in the middle, hopefully. That should, should hold. And these are short enough lengths that they won't, won't flex. So that's the, the plan with that. Um, I've cut one of my end pieces to size. Um, and that just, it's, I, I end up cutting them slightly oversized and then just sanding them down to a, to a precise fit. Um, and that's, that's nice. I've got the other end to cut now, which I'll do in a second. And as I said, I've got all these, uh, these, these ribs. Um, I'm going to be gluing this with cyanoacrylate, with um, super glue. Uh, it's not something I'm, I'm totally comfortable with. Um, I've, I've always used PVA in the past or epoxy. Obviously, I don't want to use epoxy on this, but um, the plans, they talk about instant glue, about um, using, using super glue. Um, and I'm sure it'll be fine. It's a, it's a good, strong glue. It's just not something that I'm, I'm, I'm used to using. Um, but it will. It, the whole point of this, <coughs> excuse me, is to make a nice, quick build and get this done and get my that nice Thunder Tiger Pro 61 moving. So anyway, super glue. Um, so I'm going to get on now and finish cutting these to size, glue it up, and then hopefully we can get it sheeted. I've now um, finished gluing the, uh, the tailplane or the, the kind of the basic structure of the tailplane. Um, the, the, the instruction booklet that I've got uh, that, that came in uh, RC Modeler at the time these plans were produced um, suggested that you built the tailplane actually on top of the sheeting like this. Um, but my concern was that I wouldn't be able to see the shape of it <clears throat> because obviously the sheeting isn't transparent and I preferred to build it on top of the plans as I have and now I'm going to stick the sheeting on um, afterwards. Uh, the sheeting, I'm going to glue it um, first so that it's wide enough to stick on um, the side like this. Um, it's the, the sheeting I've got, the balsa sheeting I've got and the, that you'll get isn't wide enough to do it in one strip so I'm having to join two pieces. The way I do that is to put it flat and stretch across pieces of magic tape as tight as I can. I've got five here. Um, you can tell when it's tight enough because it just lifts up a little bit like that. Now what I'm going to do is turn that over and you can feel that joint is lovely and flat. Just press it down just to make sure that all the edges do meet up nicely. I'm then going to put one of my, <coughs> or a couple of my uh, trusty weights. Uh, use that one. Got a bigger one somewhere. There we go. In fact, actually, better to use um, the smaller ones because then I can glue either side or at least put this one on its side like that. I'll put another couple in the middle I've got over here. <coughs> there we go. And now I'm, I've got this on plastic, uh, just missing the edge there and the end there. So I have to be a little bit careful. And now I'm just going to run my super glue down this joint. Probably find I'm gluing the plastic to it as well because it's quite thin balsa. This is um, uh, 16, uh, uh, 1 16th balsa, it's about one and a half mil. I, I keep talking in both metric and imperial. I've said this before, the, the plans are in imperial, um, but the uh, Everything I get is uh, in metric size, even if it's actually, um, they call it 6mm balsa I buy, um, but actually it's about 6.4mm because I think it was originally cut imperially. But anyway, um, and luckily enough I grew up in the era um, where I uh, 
experience decimalisation in the UK and so I can think in both. Right, anyway, um, that should be okay now. Just take the weights off and thankfully it's staying flat. And this will be now stuck to my plastic, so what I'm going to do is lift the plastic off, turn it over and then peel it rather than trying to pull the balsa up and, and, and potentially damage it. Here we go. Ah, that's come off. Easy enough. And that's got a lovely joint on it now. A uh, slight little bit of a rise there, but what I'll do is I will take off this magic tape very carefully and, uh, and then just sand that. Right, there we go. Perhaps something a little finer than that would be better. I think far better to actually um, join this like this um, than try and do it actually on the um, on the tailplane itself um, you get a much better joint and I will sand both sides because obviously one is going to be my finished surface and this side which has got the glue on it I will put, make the internal uh, surface that you won't see because it's not quite as well, it's smooth, but it, it's just got the glue on it. There we go. So that is lovely and flat now. And does a very nice job. I'm really pleased with that. Right, I'll get on and make the second sheet. And, uh, and then I'll get these glued onto there. Okay, well I now have my finished tail plane, uh, which has got these lovely smooth joints on the sheeting that you can't feel. Uh, close your eyes and you, you just can't feel them, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, this is such a quick build, I mean I've just built this very quickly this morning. Um, obviously it needs a lot of finishing, and to be honest the, the sanding and finishing will probably take longer than the, <laughs> than the build of the, the actual tail plane itself. And here's my elevator, which I, I cut out earlier, which is of a slightly thinner material, the, the elevator's uh, uh, 360, uh, whereas this comes out at um, 560. So, um, but that's nice, I'm pleased to get that done, and uh, like I say, now it's time to do the finishing. <laughs> 